Alright, hey guys, OFD checking in here, and I told you guys that once I got the Phoebos, I was going to wear it for a few weeks. It ended up being 30 days. I wanted to put this watch on for a whole month and wear it to work, and doing pretty much everything I would do with a watch on, including um, a lot of things I don't do usually with a watch on. So, and excuse me guys, I am outside filming in the morning, and so you might hear an occasional dog bark or something like that, but uh, it's nice outside, and I get great lighting out here, so I wanted to use the natural light. So anyways, guys, if you can ignore the dogs barking, uh, I can tell you guys, after 30 days on the wrist with this Phoebus watch, um, I'm super, super impressed with it. Um, I work in forestry, and I'm in the woods a lot, guys, hiking, uh, getting around in the mountains. This time of year, I'm also doing a lot of four-wheel driving and stuff like that, which uh, to me is a great test on these metal bracelets that the watch came on. I did wear it on this bracelet, I'll tell you guys, probably 90% of that 30 days. Um, and just recently, I slipped it here on this NATO strap just to kind of lighten it up because I was actually chopping some brush the other day with a machete and the weight of the uh, steel brace that was kind of bugging my wrist while I swung the machete. But other than that, super good. So. Like I said, hiking in the mountains, doing all kinds of stuff like that. At one point, if you guys can believe it too, I bashed this thing two times on granite rocks I was hiking up through. It was real steep, and so I was having to do some hand over hand and stuff like that. And two times I felt the uh, crystal and the bezel make contact with granite, and I mean hard, to where I thought I may have actually cracked the crystal or something like that. But amazingly, and I'll bring it up here so you guys can see it, this sapphire crystal doesn't have a mark on it. I was talking to a friend about it because it kind of blew me away that it didn't scratch the crystal from that and um, I guess with the, with the sapphire his comment was that basically you have to find something harder than sapphire to scratch it which is probably like a diamond or something but accuracy wise this watch is running Swiss for on to 515 so the accuracy is absolutely amazing talking about that real quick one thing that is I know a lot of people this bothers them and it bothers me a little bit but I've gotten over it because the accuracy but is that second hand you know, not actually nailing those indices right on. It's just just a hair off. Um, if you guys watch it, it seems like from like six seconds after to like 26 seconds after something, it hits right on like it is almost now. And then it kind of gets off a little bit. But you know what, the timekeeping has been great. I've actually used this watch to set all of my other automatics when I pick them up to wear them. And I'm comparing, um, you know, the timekeeping of my automatics to this, which is obviously uncomparable because this uh, doesn't miss a beat. <clears throat> so quality wise, and what I did tell you guys in my very first video on the Foibus when I kind of opened this one up and looked at it is, it reminds me so much of my Ocean One, uh, Steinhardt Ocean One GMT that I used to have. The case feel, the bracelet feel, the biggest difference in the bracelet really, the only difference that I can see compared to like the Steinhardt bracelets is that these are uh, actually pinned with your split pins instead of screw-in links. But very nice, very nicely done um, obviously with this brushed uh, brush bracelet here polished on the sides you do have some polishing on the buckle and look at this guys even after wearing this in the mountains for a couple of weeks and stuff like that I mean there's some scratches on it tough to see but just kind of like desk diving stuff and um, yeah I don't, I'm, not, I'm not babying this watch I actually wore it purposefully like a g-shock I tried to almost be abusive with it because I thought the watch would look good with a little bit of patina and stuff like that on it but um, <coughs> I wasn't really able to do anything to it um, so you know what I say is if you guys are in an industry where you're not doing a lot of work this watch is gonna look brand new for probably decades for you I mean it's just absolutely beautiful the battery life on this Ronda uh, 515 is three years so you can get three years of use out of this before you need to change the seal I mean change the uh, the battery and probably the seal this is a water resistant 300 meter watch so go ahead and unscrew the case back you can get the seal replaced in there and pop a new battery in it you're good to go for another three years I didn't really get too much into the case on this guys um, polished case all the way across on the sides you do have a little bit of brushing on top of the lugs and on top of the case there also give you guys some measurements because I don't think I ever gave you any measurements on this watch so side to side, minus the crown, just like it should be, you're looking at right about 42 millimeter, which is pretty standard on these watches. From lug tip to lug tip, you are looking at right about 48, 49 millimeters. 
good size. And then I'm pretty sure on our lug openings here, we are at a, excuse me. Jeez, can I do this? 20.9, so 21, I'm running a 22 millimeter on here and not having any problems with that. So I do think, um, let me try this again, because I think maybe my caliper might have been off a little bit, guys. Yeah, 21.7 there. Let's do this again. I had to zero my caliper out. 42.2, so still 42 millimeter case. Lug tip to lug tip is probably getting closer to 50 now. Oh boy, forget that. Probably about 50. My caliper's messing up. I think I need a new battery in it, but. Guys, um, I think that uh, for the price, I paid $99 for this watch. You can't find a better analog, quartz analog, um, obviously a sub homage style watch out there. I think this is probably the best you can get. These are made in China. Um, you know, most of these parts for all of these companies are manufactured in China. Uh, all the finished work is done there and then they're shipped out and assembled somewhere else that they can say made in Germany, made in Switzerland, whatever that may be. But um, honestly, guys, this is the source, I think. I think that Phoebus has gone right to the heart of watchmaking uh, in Asia and they're sourcing the best stuff you can get and they're producing these watches at a great value to you and me. Now I'm not going to do a loom shot on this watch just because it's early in the morning and I can't really get a good one. I will tell you that the loom on this, the hands are very bright, we're good, but the rest of the watch is fairly weak on the loom. It does need some work there. Now I will tell you that uh, Ethan and Emily, the company owners, did contact me after I did my first review and said that they are, these are all sold out, you can't find this black model anywhere right now, but they are in September releasing their new new version of this quartz black model. Because of the loom issue, they have upgraded to a Swiss Super Luminova, which I'm super excited to check out. I think that's going to really make a big difference on this watch. If you guys aren't familiar, you can pick up, they do make an automatic, I think they're 40 millimeter versions of this watch, so a little bit smaller, uh, running Japanese uh, automatic movements. I think they're making a Swiss automatic movement available too out there. So definitely check out their website. If you guys aren't into the sub homage look, uh, they do have a 1000 meter diver that's a really burly looking case design and stuff like that and in November uh, something I'm really excited about is they are releasing a new watch that is kind of a standalone watch to Phoebus um, very neat design very nice concepts and stuff like that definitely go to their website and check out their up-and-coming new releases I think they've got a couple of them out there um, of their own design that should be they may be even available for pre-sale um, but you should be able to pick one up here in the near future um, probably around Around November so guys definitely check out Phoebus definitely pick one of these things up if you're looking for a good analog watch that you can really uh, that has amazing looks and performs well above its price point uh, I think Phoebus is definitely the one all right guys if you like this video give me a thumbs up down there at the bottom and if you have not subscribed to the OFD channel please do please do